projects, one of the requirements is I have to build a uh, service project for the community, it could be a church, school, whatever. Uh, so my project, what they asked me to build was a doggable pit for the church. And it's, it's an octagonal pit that takes place for called doggable, and it's a very high activity, high energy sport. Kids love it. Uh, that was like the first thing on the list, that was what they wanted. Um, and I'm asking for donations this morning because I need some money to build it. Um, it's for the community. All money that doesn't go into the pit goes back to the church. So it will, only, it will not only benefit the kids, it will benefit the congregation and us too. Um, so if you're looking for something to put money into that will help the youth, um, that will help the community grow, this is a really good opportunity, and it helps me to get my revenue staff. So if you have any questions or you're interested in donating, I have a table out there in the gallery space, giant poster board, you really can't miss it. Probably saw it coming in. Um, but I'll be there if you have any questions or you're interested in donating. Thank you. Thank you, Jacob. Please stand as we begin with the fashion for you. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who gathers us in the wilderness to redeem us, anoint us, and make us new. Amen. Amen. In these 40 days, let us be honest, confess our sin, and receive God's promise of mercy.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And the Lord also with you. you. Good morning. Good morning. First reading is from Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 through 19. 
found in the Truth Bible, page 950. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you be strengthened in your inner being and power through the Spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We stand for the reading of the gospel. Psalms, as I often do, 
in the midst of uncertainty, in the midst of situations that don't necessarily make a whole lot of sense to me. And the song that I've kept coming back to over and over again during the past several days is Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth will change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city, it shall not be moved. God will help it when the morning dawns. The nations are in an uproar, the kingdoms totter, he utters his voice, the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our refuge. Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations, I am exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our refuge. We are living in unprecedented times. None of us have witnessed the global spread of a virus like COVID-19 in our lifetimes. To date, as far as we know, there have been no reports of persons testing positive for the virus in Pickerington or Fairfield County. We do know that at least one person has tested positive in Columbus. As we face these unprecedented times, our Epiphany community of Jesus followers and many other faith communities find ourselves asking questions about how we will be church and do church in the midst of this serious crisis. We find ourselves asking what it means to reveal God through revolutionary relationships, which is our new mission focus. In these days of COVID-19, how do we reveal God through revolutionary relationships? when we're not supposed to stand within six feet of each other? How do we live with an attitude of abundance when we go shopping for basic things that allow us to live with human dignity and are greeted by empty shelves of Kroger, Costco, and Lowe's, and CVS, and Walgreens, and Walmart, and Giant Eagle, and BP, and Speedway, and the list goes on? What do we do when our parents like my 85 and 86 year old parents in Northeast Ohio? What do we do when our grandparents, our siblings, our kids, our neighbors, members of Epiphany, and complete strangers are lacking even the most basic items that allow them to live with human dignity? How do we live with an attitude of abundance? For those of us who have been blessed with an abundance of material riches, this week and the weeks ahead will be a time for us to show our neighbors what it means to live as channels of abundant grace and generosity. How will we do it? Here's one way we recently demonstrated an attitude of abundance in support of the poorest people in the Western Hemisphere. Two Wednesday nights ago, I invited those who were in attendance for midweek worship to open their wallets and purses. And most of us here were old enough to know what a wallet and a purse was. And pull out all of the money they had and give to an offering in the plate in the back of the sanctuary. This impulse offering was given in support of an emergency food fund for our friends in Haiti. And the response was phenomenal. No announcement, no advance warning, 1600 and $91. With the reality of COVID-19 creeping into our midst and crippling the lives of people who have barely made it financially during the best of times, we will once again be called upon to open our wallets and our purses literally and figuratively to demonstrate compassion through our abundant giving. It's often said that God wants us to be the hands of Christ in the midst of a crisis reaching out to help heal broken people. What an inspiring idea, but how do we be in the hands of Christ for each other when we're not supposed to meet hands with each other? Well, beyond concerns about shaking our hands and contracting a virus, are there ways that we can use our hands to give life 
rather than to threaten it? A story. During World War II, a church in Strasbourg, Germany was totally destroyed. But a statue of Christ who stood by the altar was almost unharmed. Only the hands of the statue were missing. When the church was rebuilt, a famous sculptor offered to make new hands. But after considering the matter, the members decided to let it stand as it was without hands. As they said, Christ has no hands but our hands to do his work on earth. If we don't feed the hungry, give to the thirsty, entertain the stranger, visit the imprisoned, and clothe the naked, who will? Jesus is depending on us to do the very things which he did while he was on earth. If the gospel we preach does not have a social implication, if it is not effectively in day-to-day -day life, then it's not really good news. As I think of how we might answer this question about how we can use our hands, in the midst of a crisis like this one, I think of God's work our hands every September in the same way that we use our hands to touch the lives of hundreds of people by creating quilts and care packages. We are invited to be the hands of Christ as we deliver bags of groceries, medications, and yes, toilet paper. Sometimes it comes to nothing more than that. All of this work is done with our hands, without coming within six feet of each other. So in these days of uncertainty and fear, God invites us as much as ever to extend compassion to the vulnerable in our community of Jesus followers, in our families, in our neighborhoods, and in other parts of our lives. To show compassion means to feel with, to feel the pain of others, to feel the concerns of others, to feel the needs of others, to be part of healing the needs of others, all in the spirit of the one who shows us the greatest abundance of compassion that we can imagine. In the midst of this crisis, we are blessed to have strong congregational leaders who are responding thoughtfully and with deliberate speed. This afternoon, the Executive Committee of Church Council will meet at 2 p.m. Your church staff will be meeting tomorrow at 10 a.m. Terry McCandless will be seated there. Karen Augustine there. Jeff Mitchell here. I'll be there. Allie will be down the hall with the microphone. And we'll meet. Some of the questions that will be discussed during these meetings include the following. How do we maintain connections with each other as the body of Christ in this time? Our web page, Facebook, email, social media of other kinds? How do we care for members of the congregation who are sick, homebound, and quarantined? How do we develop a strategy to help provide groceries, medications, and other basic needs? How do we provide spiritual support to each other throughout each week? I think by combining their expertise, perspectives, experiences, and insights, our church staff, with the help of the executive committee, will develop a communication plan that will be posted on our website, Facebook, and who knows where else by about 5 o'clock tomorrow, we hope. It will also be emailed to our members whose addresses we have on record. Truth is that none of us know how the crisis that we are living in will impact us in the days, the weeks, and the months ahead. We just don't know. Some want to shrug it off as a crisis that has been created by media or politicians looking to score points with their constituencies. I think the wiser among us are taking COVID-19 very seriously, including our own government, who has shown consistent, honest, transparent, and careful leadership during this crisis. And that's not a political statement, it is an observation of what I see. What we do know is that God promises to walk with us as we try to navigate a road that we have never seen before. This road is so new and so confusing that it cannot be found on Waze or Google Maps. In the midst of our confusion, God promises to go ahead of us and make a way where there seems to be no way. As we read in Deuteronomy 31, it is the Lord who goes before you. The 
Lord will be with you. The Lord will not fail you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. I want to close this morning with a prayer from the morning prayer service in our red hymnal. I think there could be no more appropriate prayer at a time like this. And so let us pray. Oh God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending. My paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not always knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
hearts of leaders and authorities, that they hear and respond to the cries of the suffering. Bring peace and reconciliation to people divided by race, culture, standard of living, and nationality. Lord, help the leaders of the world to work together to minimize the devastating effects of the coronavirus pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God of living water, renew us in the promises of baptism. Pour your Holy Spirit into our hearts and give us peace as we live in the hope of our salvation and work to serve others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of healing, as we gather today, we give you thanks for your constant presence in our lives. Today, we pray for those who are in special need of healing in any way, in body, mind, and spirit. Those whose lives have been rocked by diagnosis of the coronavirus. Those who are quarantined and need somehow to know that we are with them, that you are with them, that they are not alone, and that you are a healing, a loving, and a caring God. As we pray today, hear us as we name either aloud or in the silence of our hearts the names of those for whom we pray. According to your steadfast love, O God, hear these and all our prayers as we commend them to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Exception of the meeting of the executive committee this afternoon at 2 and uh, staff meeting tomorrow at 10. We are canceling all other meetings until uh, we are able to reach out with some clear communication tomorrow. So we ask for your patience as we uh, think this through, as we pray this through, and as we seek to be uh, responsible leaders in our congregation. We stand as we join in the Lord's Prayer.
Oh, okay. Like, see you in the neighborhood. <laughs>